We're Spearfish in New South Wales, and this is the episode everyone's been waiting for. Stay tuned, you're gonna absolutely froth this episode. It'd be nice to grab a couple of crays this early in the morning. A cray hunter all the way from New Zealand. Poseidon has blessed us with another day of incredible visibility, good fish life, plenty of bonnies, and there might have even been a solid king. And uh, yeah, mission accomplished. Though so surprisingly, there's a lot of Spiro love down at this boat ramp, which is rare because usually linos aren't too keen on uh, spear fishermen, but yeah, don't know why the relations are so good, but stoked. Everyone's wishing us best luck and trying to give us spots for craze and all sorts. Pretty familiar with this area, although I've never doved it in conditions like this, so pretty bloody lucky. And fingers crossed we can get some nice fish, some craze, some abs maybe. You know, it's everything's on the cards today. And we're a bit earlier, we've got an hour and a half extra in the water. Let's get it. We launch the jet ski with no dramas. We slowly head on out. The conditions are looking absolutely stellar for the day. We had a vis report the previous day, so we know that there's visibility here. We also know that there's fish here. But after yesterday's blank, we don't want to have that happen again. So we decide to quickly pull in and we see if we can grab some craze to start the day. Now it is here that I realize that I've left my gloves on the shore, but you know what? I'm not going back. We've just anchored up. Um, we've chosen this space because of, I believe it should be all right for crays and it'd be nice to grab a couple of crays this early in the morning. It's not even 8.30, so let's see if we can crack on to some crays. We've got a cray hunter all the way from New Zealand. She's lethal. She knows about these crays. There's a Eastern, I think what you call a pack horse. Oh, they look pretty similar anyways. But yeah, conditions look stellar. We're in about 12 meters of water and I can see the bottom very, very clearly in HD. So let's get wet. I've got to say, there's not much better ways to start the day than this. Hopping into nice fresh water with just insane visibility. I'm using my spear here as a bit of a anchor point so that I can let my gun loose on the surface and just dive around and check spots for crays. I do this because I don't want my gun to just lie on the reef and just roll around getting all kinds of scratched up and then maybe hidden by some weed and struggle to find it, so good safety tip. I am diving without gloves. You can see a decent amount of abalone here. There's quite a healthy stock of juvenile ab, but just struggling to find anything that's like monstrously legal, so we continue on the search. Where there's abs, there should be crays, but we're definitely just not seeing any crays, like looking in all the right kind of spots, but then I kind of get distracted with the amount of abalone and then decide, oh, actually, wouldn't mind some abalone. So we focus on those guys a bit more. I'm diving for abs barehanded, and honestly, it's nowhere near as fun. You slice your fingers up on bits of barnacle and bits of reef nearby and uh, yeah it's just not not as enjoyable so but thankfully mon gives me her gloves and we resume the day after not having much luck with the crayfish and managing to get ourselves two nice legal abalone we decide to move to a different spot and i spot all this bait decide to hop in. Seeing this much bait knock around is a really good indicator that there'll be predators nearby. I do spot some bonito, but they don't want anything to do with me. So I decide to burly up some kingfish skin. This could backfire and it could bring in some sharks, but you know what, take a gamble, let's do it. Yep, it works. The bonnies come in, they're excited, they're moving around, which makes them a bit harder to track. But thankfully I've got my trusted 85 roller, which honestly this thing is a dream to just manoeuvre through the water. And I'm gonna need all the manoeuvrability I can get because of this thing is moving very quickly. Bonitos typically do move quicker than other fish, which makes them fun to hunt and great for training skills. And lights out on the first fish, let's go. I absolutely love this gun, it is a laser cannon. It just takes out everything that I need. I don't aim with it, some of you guys ask, in the comment section I don't aim like specifically I kind of just look at where I want to shoot the fish and then they're not huge but I mean great for pokey and um, sash you can go well as fish wraps for tonight I might get one more and then we'll move 
Not a huge bonito, but I'm stoked to get a fish in the esky and end that one dive of a blank run that we had previously. After bleeding out that bonnie and putting him straight on ice, I hop back in the water and see if I can suss out any other fish. Could there be some snapper about? Could there be a kingfish around? There's more bonito, so we'll keep an eye on those guys and I might take another one for the bag just because they are so tasty. Here you can see a juvenile eagle ray, which was really, really cool to see. There was a big one that moved through first and then just a little baby that came up behind. I'm in about 23, 24 meters of water, but I'm only diving down to around 16 because of that's all that's needed. Here we've got another school of bonito coming on through. Beautiful scenes, but I'm struggling to get a shot, so I turn myself upside down to dive a little bit deeper and take a shot on a bonito practically upside down and yeah, lights out for that bonito. Two out of two, two shots fired and two bonnies stoned. Pretty stoked with that and it's a great way to start the day. We quickly bleed the fish and put her straight on ice. I actually don't have a dive knife on me. Um, my dive knife snapped earlier in the day and unfortunately I'm left without a knife. But I haven't had to worry about that so far because I've just been stoning these fish. So the knife hasn't even occurred to me. I typically rip the gills out, I don't cut the gills out. So anyways, more on this later. We then move on to another spot. After that one just seems to be producing the same bonnies. So we go further afield searching for snapper, blue mawong and kingfish. We come across this area, there's lots of bait movement, lots of action in the water and a thumping current. I'm being absolutely dragged across the reef here at a fast pace. There's Australian salmon sighted and I'm really, really cautious here because if I know that you can just have big fish come up to you in this white water, lots of movement. Sure enough, it did happen, but it was silver drummer. Huge schools of silver drummer just made themselves appear through the white water and then sure enough disappeared. I got Mon to collect me on the ski. Mon's not actually diving at the moment. She's in a two mil wetsuit and she's sunning herself on the ski to try and heat up so she can drop back into the water. I continue exploring new ground and Mon just acts as a good spotter on the ski for me to make sure that I don't get hit by any boats. I do come across this blue Morwong, but unfortunately he just didn't want to play ball. He didn't give me a nice enough shot to validate pulling the trigger and I didn't just want to shoot a fish to have it pull off. Better to let him go and let him grow. I'll get him next time. We do another reset, start off at the beginning, and I am fascinated with this patch of bait. There's bonito underneath, and it's just really timid and frighty. Every time I make like a decent splash, all the bait bolts down, which indicates that it's been hit recently. And for the size of the bonito coming past, I don't think it's the bonnies. I think that there might be something bigger. So I decide to hang around a bit more. After 30 minutes or so, a school of bonito become really, really comfy with me. And you know what? It's just too tempting not to take a shot. When you've got bonnies just circling you like this at a slow pace, even if they are moving away, we'll take another shot. And that's three for three. That's three fish stoned on three shots. My accuracy today, everybody will have a day where they are just unstoppable. And it seems like today is gonna to be that for me. I've got three shots. I didn't take the shot on the blue Moe. I could have, but I probably didn't want to affect my streak. I don't know, but stoked to have another Bonnie on board. And I know Mom will be happy. She absolutely loves these fish. They're her favorite fish in New South Wales. So between the two of us getting Bonito and Goatfish actually isn't that hard of a task. We're easily satisfied and boy do they make up some incredible meals. <laughs> Once I've shot this fish, there's obviously a lot of blood in the water, there's a bit of commotion happening. I load the fish into the back of the esky as I always do and as soon as I put my head back in the water, there's a kingfish moving around so I dive down and you know what, I've shot three fish and I've stoned three fish. This thing is a big fish. Of course, I'm gonna absolutely skunk the shot. I miss. How is that possible that I can shoot a bonito from like four and a half meters away and get it in its head? 
and it's like a 35 centimeter fish and then I can shoot a bonito upside down directly in its head from like four meters away and then it comes to a big kingfish I get like two and a half meters from the fish and I miss the shot. I asked Mons to pass me one of the bonito sadly I sacrifice it and dive down on this king he's too greedy he comes back in and gives me a shot I'm not missing this I'm gonna go for a body shot and you know what let's go for the fight as soon as I take the shot though, I do realize that this fish is thumping. It looks quite small on the GoPro because the GoPro pushes the fish away um, because of the fish eye lens. It does look as if it's only like a 40 centimeter oh, fish, but this thing is a beast. And it's got a lot of power, it pulls me around. I stay on the surface, call for Mon to get a dive knife, and I know that I'm in for a fight. I'm kicking like hell. But the, uh, oh, it's gonna be a long fight. Put the gun on the boat and I'll fight him on the reel. Trying to stop this fish from dragging me under. Mon comes over to offer support. This is great. If any sharks come in, she can quickly hop in or chuck me a gun or do something, rev up the ski to try and scare away the shark. Unfortunately, whilst fighting this guy, I do encounter the blue bottle and the blue bottle decides to go straight onto my snorkel and wrap onto my face. Here's me trying to spit away the stingers of the blue bottle. I think I got it, but unfortunately not. When I put my snorkel back in my mouth, I actually pass the stinger of the blue bottle inside my mouth and then because of my place around the snorkel mouthpiece I then managed to throw that stinger into the back of my throat from that I was in a lot of pain had the kingfish going off there was just so much happening at once the inside of my mouth was on fire I could barely breathe and I could feel the swelling kicking up on the inside of my cheek and on my lips very very painful and I've got this fish to fight we don't want Mon anchoring up and hopping in just yep. yet I'm in quite a lot of current so it's important that we stay close to the ski keep a rider on the ski should we need them and yeah just got to fight this thing in and and suck up the pain of the blue bottle the other drama is I don't have a knife I snap my knife and Mon can't find her knife so I'm gonna have to take this guy up to the surface Oh, Rip out his jaws and bleed him out slowly and try and get another spear or something into him to put him out of his misery so he isn't just bleeding out. I'm now fully aware that I need to bring this guy to the surface without a dive knife and then rip out his gills and try and get a spear or something to icky the fish to put it out of its misery otherwise it's going to be a long time bleeding out this fish has got so much fight in it i've sped up and i've cut out some clips but so far we're at six minutes 50 for the original fight of this fish so a pretty decent fight a great holding shot and honestly if i had a knife now i could just grab it under the gills and then just knife it in the head unfortunately we need to do a bit more than that i need to grab it by the gills and then rip out its gills which is a bit brutal to be honest i definitely don't recommend this this is one of the saddest ways i've had to put down kingy but with no knives on deck aside from a fillet and knife i don't want to risk using the fillet and knife it's extra sharp and if i slip or something big troubles will be had so i just bleed the fish out i can see that he's lost color lost life and it's time Oh my god, my mouth is on fucking fire. I don't know. It got inside my fucking mouth. My tongue, everything. And that is it. The fish has lost a lot of life. It's not moving. It's obviously bleeding out at a rapid rate, which is why you can see it's gone white. It will come back up green in those traditional kingfish colours. I'm absolutely over the moon, stoked, a bit dehydrated at this point and definitely really sore from the blue bottle stings. My face is still on fire. If anybody's been stung by a blue bottle, they know that they well, actually, are quite painful sting, the boat but um, copping it inside the mouth was just gross. In the middle of all this, I did manage to headbutt the ski as well, so I had a bit Can of a sore my gun? from that and we've got this red algae moving last minute. Lots of stuff going on, but... And then I'll hang the spear back in. Alright guys, so... Absolutely stoked. The struggle was real. I don't know if you can see my lip. It stings like all through my tongue, 
the back of my throat, all my lips and the side of my face. Um, yeah, had to definitely put in some work and hurt to get that boy on board, but um, bloody stoked, as you can see, a bit happy. That's a solid fish. Bloody stoked with that. Wah, give him a kiss. So that's the first proper kingy on the ski. Absolutely stoked with that. He's probably about 1.3 meters. That's a solid, a solid oh, girl. And yeah, we are happy with that. Get a load of that. So absolutely stoked. Massive shout out to Cronulla Sea Doo. The Explorer is amazing for getting out and just, yeah, enduring. Um, windshield, I didn't like it at the start, but I love it now. Like it stops you copping so much spray. You can see the other boat is just getting soaked and for us, it's not as bad. And uh, yeah, mission accomplished. Let's get this guy, fill it up and then uh, we'll fish wraps. Let's go. I do just want to say a massive thank you to our sponsor, Aim Right, for producing incredible weapons and incredible wetsuits. Absolutely love how warm and comfy these suits are and how accurate the guns are. Cannot thank Aim Right enough for supporting me and doing what I do. After that, we decided to make our way back in as the wind was starting to pick up, but we had filled our esky to the brim and that kingfish needed some good treatment ready for filleting anyways. Unfortunately, the cameras died for the filleting session, but the kingfish went roughly one for one, which was huge. I was so stoked to actually capture it on film because of my dive camera died shortly after and I stupidly left the jet ski camera running, as you can see here. I'm absolutely loving the jet ski spear in life. It just completely changed the game for me. I've been a proud rock hopper since the age of 13 and honestly getting my own watercraft, taking it out, being able to move spots as frequently as you can and just having so much fun between dive sites is just the best thing ever. You can store drinks, it's just fantastic. So I'll do a full run through on the next video and you can enjoy what the ski has to offer. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please hit the thumbs up. Please drop a comment. You have no idea how much it improves the algorithm of the video, which then boosts the channel and will keep wet mammal content coming. Until next time, stay wet, stay fed. Catch ya.